Hi, this is Rochelle at Scrap Craftastic, and today we're going to try and make a sticker storage similar to this. This is really popular in the planner community right now. Um, generally, they come with a sticker on the cover, the spine, and the back. But basically, it's just like this poly material with photo sleeves attached to the spine. And it's like just basically a clear plastic. So we're going to attempt to make our own using supplies from the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree sells these chopping mats and you get two in a pack for a dollar. Um, they've changed the the packaging so I'm not sure which one is the most recent one but since I already had this one open we'll just use one of these but they are the same um, as far as the weight and quality So I've already measured this. These are the same material, actually. Yeah. Very much the same. So, so I've already done the measurements. You'll need to cut a piece of this mat at six and a quarter by eleven and three eighths. So let's see can't do it that way so we're gonna have to do it the long way which means more waste but so I'm probably going to I'm gonna to need to trim off their rounding which is here so that our corners can can all match but that's just aesthetics let's go ahead and do the actual cutting I don't recommend cutting this with um, your paper trimmer it's probably gonna be better to use a knife and a metal ruler or scissors if you're good with a straight line you can actually take your ruler and draw a straight line on it I'm going to use this um, glass cutting mat and hope for the best if you need to <laughs> tape it down do that um, I'm just trying to see which way is going to work best for me And I think I am going to tape it down with some Dollar Tree washi tape. I'm gonna have to turn it at an angle. Yeah. I'm gonna have to cut at an angle to get the correct and keep it on the glass the whole time. Okay. <laughs> so now that we've got it taped down, I'm gonna go ahead and measure six and a quarter inches. Let's use a sharpie. I'm just going to measure. So six and a quarter here. I have to turn this around so I can see. Now, if you have the book to use as a template, you can easily do that. I just wanted to show how to do it because not everyone has, has access to those books. So, there's six and a quarter there. So, I'm just going to take this. Um, you can use a craft knife from Dollar Tree as well or a blade from Dollar Tree. Uh, where is mine? Here it is. 
So I think these come in a pack of three. And you can actually uh, break off the blade as it dulls and get a sharp blade to work with. Um, and it also locks into position if you pull this back. So you can use that to keep it 100% Dollar Tree. I did invest in a more heavy duty blade because I was using it to cut inserts. So I think for this, just to help things go a little faster, I'm going to use that. And also, when you are cutting with a blade, I suggest you use a metal ruler. That way, um, you're not cutting into your ruler. If you use plastic or wood, the blade can easily cut into the ruler. Okay. So I'm lining up my metal ruler with the tick marks where I measured at six and a quarter inches. I'm getting it as straight as possible. I'm going to apply pressure. I always put the ruler on the side that I want to keep. This side is the excess. That way the ruler kind of protects my good side if I go off track with the blade. And it may, I'll end up scarring the piece that I don't need versus, or instead of, the piece that I need. So I'm going to take my blade, hold my ruler firmly. This ruler has a very old ruler, but it has a cork backing so that it's, it helps keep it from sliding. So if you don't have a cork backing, putting some masking tape on the back of your ruler helps with the sliding. Um, but hold the ru ruler firmly in place and make light, light strokes. You're not going to be able to cut through this in one go. So you're going to do multiple runs until you can feel that you've cut through the plastic. I can hear the blade touching the glass and I think I'm done. Yes. Okay. So let's put that away. Remove our excess. And now we have a clean line. So next I'm going to go ahead and trim off a bit of the rounded corner because I don't need that. So I'm going to line this up using my mat to guide and keep things straight. Let's taper down. So I'm just trimming off this little bit here because of the rounding. We don't want that part. Now if the rounded corner isn't an issue for you, then you don't have to do this step. I'm just removing it because I don't need it. And actually you can save it and use it as a template if you're manually rounding all of your corners. You can save this little piece use it as a guide to um, round your corners so okay so we're going to start with this edge and we need it to be 11 and 3 quarter inches long so I prefer to use this ruler because I can see better and it's not just a centering ruler 
the key to good quality measuring is making sure that your ruler is straight. If your ruler is not straight, then your measuring is going to be off. It's really hard to measure on that because I can't see. So, 11. Uh, okay, it slips and slides. 11 and 3 eighths. 1, 2, 3 eighths. So, that's 11 and 3 eighths there. We're going to go on the other side and do the same thing. 11 and 3 eighths. And mark the plastic. See my little tick marks? Okay. So I'm going to trim this piece off. And this knife I picked up from Home Depot. Um, I don't remember how much it was. I'm pretty sure it was less than $10. Okay. So there we go. This is the same size. Hopefully. <laughs> if my measuring is correct. As the original. Yes. Okay. So now what we'll do again that's six and a quarter by eleven and three eighths. Now what we need to do is score. That is how whoever manufactured these was able to get it to fold. You use it's just a score. It's just where they lightly cut through the plastic. Uh, just enough for it to bend and fold. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to have to measure some more for this part. Each side of this book will be four and seven eighths. So you measure four and seven eighths from this side and four and seven eighths from that side and that'll give you your spine. And that is where, where we will be scoring. Um, I should have thought of this before. Let's put a piece of paper under here. And that will help be able to see it a little better. So I'm lining up my ruler as straight as possible. So now we're going to measure our front and back pieces. And that will give us our spine. So four and seven eighths. So four, seven eighths is the tick on this ruler right before you get to the five. So I'm going to tick it right there. Do four and seven eighths up here. So four and seven eighths is here. Okay, flip it over and do the same thing. Probably need to put a piece of tape on the back of that too to keep it from slipping on the plastic. So this is where we're gonna score lightly to make our folds. So again, I'm gonna take the metal ruler, line it up, I think I'm going to go ahead and tape it down again. Let's get this piece out of the way. Hmm. So I'm lining it up with the dots. And I'm just going to... I think I'm just going to do it lightly one time to see how that works. 
try to use even pressure all the way down but again you're not digging into the plastic you're not trying to cut it you're just making a, a light cut into the plastic you're not trying to cut it all the way through just enough to give it a fold okay let's see did that work I think it did so you can see let's see let me see can you see the lines in the plastic where I scored it I think you can see it that way okay so now I'm just gonna fold it over oh. fold it over give it a good crease fold it over give it a good crease and there you have it Samesies, samesies. <laughs> okay. I don't have a tool that would actually attach the plastic to the spine like in the uh, actual book. But what we can do is do it similar to other sticker storage solutions that are small like this and use the traveler's notebook method where you punch the holes and string some elastic in. So I decided that's what I would do with mine. You can use a regular size hole punch, you can use the Dollar Tree hole punch to punch your holes, or you can use an eyelet setter, or you can just use a regular hole punch. I actually have an eighth of an inch hole punch somewhere. Just had it the other day. So yeah, I, I don't even remember where I got this, but it's an eighth of an inch hole punch. And I think if I'm strong enough to punch through the plastic, I'm going to use this. You could also use some type of pokey tool to try to poke through the plastic. I think this will be perfect though. Let's see if you can see. See that hole? Okay. So that's what I'll do. To decide where to punch your holes, you could just eyeball it. I don't really like to eyeball it that much because I like my things to be the same. So in this case, I'm just going to measure down a quarter of an inch from each end, from the top and the bottom. And then, let's mark it on both sides. So now, we're going to measure a half an inch from each score line. Again, it's hard for me to see this. Um, so I measured a quarter of an inch from the top here. Now I'm measuring an, a half an inch from each score. So a half an inch from this side. So this is where my hole will go. And then a half an inch from this side. Okay. Flip it over and do the same thing. Line it up with my quarter inch marks and the spine. Half an inch. Half an inch. Make it a little darker so you can see. So that's where I'm going to punch my holes. I'm not going to do a closure for this because it pretty much will stay closed on its own once it's trained. I'm doing this exactly like the original. I mean as exact as I can get it. I'm sure you could make the spine wider and include more books. But for the purposes of this, 
we're going to stick with being able to just put two books in. So I'm going to punch my holes. Okay. Then it's just a matter of adding your string or your elastic rather. <laughs> it's not string. Um, I guess you could use string. <clears throat> but I'm going to use elastic. You can get elastic from pretty much any fabric store. Uh, you can order it online. I've seen it on, well, I've actually ordered some from eBay. They have it in Etsy, on Etsy as well. So I'm going to be using um, some gold elastic, but I just wanted to show you uh, some of the things that I have for binding. So I keep everything in here. So this is my binding box. And this is the elastic that I'm going to be using. It's from Joanne. I have several rolls of it, but this is also a kit of a container of elastics that I have. This is from Joanne, and I just kind of stuck it in here. But the rest of these are from uh, eBay, and I just ordered to have them on hand. But so, and I have needle, thread, other types of elastics in here. But for this, we're going to use the gold. I would like to use the white. I don't have very much white left, and I need to re um, stop the plain white. So for now, we'll use, we'll use the gold. So I think we just need to measure two lengths of this. So I measured a little over two lengths. I'm going to take the side. It already has a tape on it. No, no. So, how do we do this? Thread it from the inside. Through this hole. Come down. Thread it through from the inside. Oops. Okay. <laughs> From the inside, let's grab that back through the other side. So, yeah, two lengths should do it. Let's take this tape off. And then you want to pull it snug. This is not the best. Um, elastic for this. Do you want to pull it snug, at least snug enough that your books will stay in and not just slip out? And then tie a knot. You can leave the excess. I have a little too much excess. So I'm going to trim some of that off. <clears throat> and there you have it. The Dollar Tree I mean, it's not completely Dollar Tree, but mostly Dollar Tree. Um, they do have photo albums similar to this. This one is one that came from Walmart in a pack of four, which I think is a much better deal. I think they're $2.97 for four, where you would be paying a dollar for one at the Dollar Tree. And also, the quality of the ones from Walmart is, quality is, a, is better than the ones from Dollar Tree. I think the Dollar Tree ones load from the side as well, and these load the, from the top. And you can take these papers out and put what you want in there or use that as addis additional storage. But this should fit right in here. Like so. Oops. Then let's put another one in. this one in here like so but what we didn't do is round the corners but you can do that as well so this is what it looks like um, I think if I were to make another one in this case I 
I would make the edges a little bit longer say maybe add a quarter inch on each side maybe I don't know the pink book seems to fit fine it's the black book so it may be the positioning of the black book and I think once you start putting um, your stickers in there you'll see a difference let's try one that's full of stickers so here's my actual traveler's notebook let's try one of the books that's already pretty full of stickers and see how it fits yeah so once these, the stickers fill it up it doesn't seem to stick out as much so now we've tested Let's go ahead and round the corners. So we'll take this out. I'm not sure if just any old corner rounder will corner rounder will work on this plastic. I have the We Are Memory Keepers Crocodile Corner Chomper, and I think it is an excellent investment. First, I'm going to try and do a quarter inch. And see it how I like that. I always start small and then go bigger. I think I like the quarter inch. So I'm just going to chomp them all a quarter of an inch. Okay, so there it is. The photo book. Again, you can make this these edges a little longer if you want. But this is comparable to this. The only difference is we're using an elastic binding. So, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like videos like this, please click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you will receive notifications whenever I upload a new video. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.